Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they'd crossed over again, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid their sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. Well, as I return from sabbatical, I have a confession to make. I am an addict. I am addicted to external stimulation. Whether it's my phone and its ever-present temptations of Facebook and Safari and text messaging, or my computer's desktop and laptop, or the television, or my music delivery systems, whatever the choice is at the moment, it seems I must have something coming in. And often, I have more than one of those things going on at the same time. There must be something going on. And I have a feeling I'm not the only one. And and into the noise of our existence comes today's invitation from Jesus to his disciples. He says, come away to, another translation has it, a quiet place all by yourselves and rest a while. I know Pastor Russell and Vicar Emily have been preaching on the second lessons, but how could I not notice this text as I come back from sabbatical? Uh, especially in light of my confessions. You see, right before this, Jesus has sent the disciples out on their first, you could call it a mission trip, really. Now they're coming back and reporting to him all their stories of what they've been doing. Jesus, you won't believe what happened. There was this man who had been sick with a fever for days, and, and, and I blessed him with oil and prayed over, and the fever broke. Oh, and Jesus, you won't believe this. Master, when I went into this small fishing village across the lake and I called on people to repent of their ways and turn back to God, some of them actually did. Oh, and Jesus, you won't believe what happened to James and me when we ran into these Pharisees over in Gennesaret. They flat ran us out of town. Can you believe that? And they shared their stories and all that they had done and all that had been done to them, somewhat because I expect they were excited to be able to share, but I also believe they shared their stories to prove to Jesus they were worthy followers because, well, those disciples were human beings too. And human beings, we have this habit of always needing to justify ourselves, to prove we are worth loving. And Jesus patiently listened for a while. And then he said to them, come away to a quiet place all by yourselves and rest a while. It was a behavior that Jesus had actually modeled for them right at the beginning of their relationship. If you want to read that, go back to the first chapter of Mark. I'll let you do that later on your own. 
It was also something, as we said with the kids a while ago, that God did at creation. Rest, and it was good. Something God did, and yet I have difficulty shutting down and not doing something, you know. Grab the iPad, yeah. That's why beginning my sabbatical time with three days at a silent retreat center about an hour south of Corpus Christi in the middle of nowhere was a challenge. No cell phone signal, no TV, no music, no friends, no nothing for 72 hours. The only exceptions to that quiet being morning worship every morning at 7, and the one hour a day I would spend with the spiritual director. Other than that, I was directed to rest, be quiet, be still, and listen for God's voice. Listen to God's creation all around me. Sad, isn't it? I had to sign up to have someone make me shut up and be still. But did you hear the psalm? I'm not the only one. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures, right? But in that quiet, and it was a peaceful place, in that quiet, no, I didn't hear God's audible voice, but I do think my relationship with God grew. It's amazing how when I didn't have things that I had to do and didn't have constant stimulation coming in, I could relax a bit, rest. In the quiet, I began to remember things that I had forgotten long ago. Things would just come up and, oh yeah, I could reflect. I could talk with God far more than I'm used to. And I could be open to listening for that still, small voice. And I could remember better some of those basic things that we just shared with the kids. Jesus is here. Jesus is with me. Jesus loves me. I love Jesus. That every moment of every day is lived in the loving presence of God. We just don't recognize it. Now, I know for many of us, hearing Jesus say, come away and rest, that may come across as a word of law, a command to do something that we think we can't. We just don't have the time, or we're just too addicted. Lots of folks told me as I left for Leb Shemaya, that was the name of that retreat center, that they just didn't think they could possibly do three days of silence. Just could not. I get that. And I also know for, say, a single mother of three who's working full time, this call to a moment of Sabbath can seem like just one more demand, one more chunk to carve out of a day, and I get that too. And yet even for that person, I would invite you to hear Jesus' invitation to rest as gospel, as good news, because it is. This call to Sabbath time is good. It's gospel, because God knows we need it to be healthy. And because it's a call to get away just for a bit from all the distractions and rest in the presence of God. So often we say we'd like to be closer to Jesus, have a more intimate relationship with God, and yet we fill every moment of every day with something, right? That's not only exhausting, it begins to form a wall to keep out the Holy Spirit a wall to keep God on the margins of our lives. How can we hear God's call? How can the Holy Spirit find a way in to work on our hearts, to develop our trust in God, to build our faith if we are filling the air 
with the flack and noise of busyness of input. Yes, absolutely. God still loves us dearly, whether we're able to respond to this invitation or not. But Jesus says to us, I have so much more to give you. This is a gift. Come away with me to a quiet place, all alone, and rest in my presence. So what might that quiet place all alone look like? Well, you know, only you can answer that. Maybe you can do a silent retreat for a few days like I was blessed with, if you can wrangle a few days away. Maybe it means getting up before everyone else in the house does for a little quiet or, or taking an evening walk all by yourself to go sit on a rock. Perhaps it just means not grabbing the paper and turning on the news first thing in the morning, but sitting in your favorite chair with your Bible in your lap. And maybe if you are that single mom with a house full of kids, it may be that you find your place as 15 minutes in the bathroom with the door locked. I mean, whatever it takes, right? Whatever it looks like for you. Think of this time as what it really is, a rendezvous. You're going into that space to spend a few minutes with God, time resting in Christ's presence. If you can carve out a half an hour, that's awesome. If you can only spend five minutes, that helps. Five minutes without input. <laughs> can be amazing when you truly step aside from everything else. And what do you do? Well, you can read your Bible in that time and let God speak to you that way. You can spend time in prayer, expressing your love and gratitude to God for the things of the day. You can do the little 4-2-3 exercise that we did with the kids. You can close your eyes and try to clear your head for a bit. Just focus on Christ's presence. And when the thoughts of the day intrude into that process, and I guarantee you they will repeatedly, don't beat yourself up. Let those thoughts go and focus once again on the presence of Christ. Perhaps find a, uh, a word or a phrase that brings you back to your meditation. Jesus loves me. Mercy, peace, love, whatever the phrase is. Best would be if you could do all three. Now, maybe you find what happens when you try this that suddenly you nod off and start napping. That's okay, too, if that's what you need. Simple rest is a godly thing, and we are a sleep-deprived society as a whole. Our response to Christ's call also includes actual rest. Now, if you're making your time at the, the beginning of the day, or especially if you're doing it at the end of the day, I put something in your bulletins for you. It's a gift from our Jesuit friends. It's called Praying the Jesuit Examination of Conscience. Grab that if you've got it handy. If you can spend an hour journaling about this stuff, wow, that's awesome. If you've only got five minutes to pray this through, you're ahead of the game, okay? They say, begin with thanksgiving. Lord, I realize that all, even myself, is a gift from you. So today, for what things am I most grateful? And then they call it intention. Lord, open my eyes and ears to be more honest with myself. Today, what do I really want for myself? And this isn't, you know, hey, I want a new car, that kind of a thing. This is with who you have made me to be as a human being. What do I want for myself to be that person? Examination is the third. Lord, show me what's been happening to me and in me this day. Today, Lord, in what ways have I experienced your love? Contrition. 
Lord, I am still learning to grow in your love. So today, what choices have I made that have been inadequate responses to your love? And finally, once again, we end with hope. Lord, let me look with longing toward the future. Today, how will I let you lead me to a brighter tomorrow? You see, the point of this time is to come away from the demands of life and our need for noise into a time set apart for resting in the presence of Jesus. Because I tell you, Jesus is here with us every moment of every day. Jesus is here for us, for you. Wherever you find your space for quiet rest, Jesus is already there, waiting, with arms wide open, a shoulder for you to lean on, a lap for you to sit in, even if you are an old guy like me. <laughs> this 90 days of sabbatical, which I've just experienced, this the time of stepping away from my calling in order to rest and explore my relationship with God, this has been a tremendous gift, and I cannot thank the good people of Zion enough for this time. This invitation, the one from Jesus to his disciples, from Jesus to you, to come away for a time and rest, this too is a gift. It is gospel, good news. So come away to a quiet place. Come just as you are and rest in the arms of God. And to God be the glory. Amen.